Happy New Year, brothers and sisters. Every one of us is either going through a challenge, emerging on the other side of a challenge, or about to enter a challenge with peaks and valleys. But too often our faith can be, God answer my prayers and I'll believe. But even if that never happens, I will worship you and be faithful to him. God, I know you're able to rescue me from this disease, but even if that never happens, I will worship you with joy. God, I know you're able to provide a better job for me, even if, I never, even if this never happens. I will worship you in my feeble, flimsy 1991 fixer repair daily. We need to have faith in God because we trust that he can rescue us and also that he knows best and in the end will do what is right and will prove to be worthy of our obedience. We know this without a doubt. In every situation we face, our Savior is with us and God is in control because God is good all the time. Amen. And now it's time for Children's Church with Grandma Pat Riddle. While she's coming up, right after Children's Church, we're going to have Affirmation of Faith. And what I'd like to give you is a little FYI for your information. I will read it slowly so that you can repeat it right after me. And let us each, let each word kind of value in our heart. But we will read the word Catholic. It is with a small c. It has nothing to do with the church. The meaning of Catholic is universal or wide reaching. This has nothing to do or has no relationship with the capital C Catholic Church. So just that's just for your information. And here's Sister Pat Red. much better than what we've had. I wonder what this new year that God has given us we will be like. We don't really know what will happen, but we know what we do and where we go all and what expected things will happen to us. We have no idea. So what can we plan to do with this new year? We can promise to do what we were supposed to do and stay out of trouble. And I'll work on that hard. Thank you. <laughs> we can promise to be extra kind and helpful. We all are, but there's always something that we could do to help, help others. We may not know them. Um, you may see at the grocery store somebody, uh, maybe an elder woman like me, that needs, needs help carrying out the groceries. We can help them with it. And then we can tell them to have a good day. Anytime we could see anybody that we could help, let's do it and just tell them to have a blessed day. The more we do that, the more they'll smile and the more they'll think, well, God is a, somebody I need and with me every day. 
We can use all these promises. That's a very good way to start this new year. What promises can you make? I'm sure we could all think of one. So let's use it in a way that God would be proud for us and what we're doing. And let's live and show everybody that we have God in our life. Let us pray just, just a minute. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the times we had in the last year. We also thank you for this new year. We pray that you will be with each one of us, guide us the way you want us to have. And Lord, I pray that you will bless this country and this world, that things will change and that we will all turn around to you and know that you are what we need. In thy name we pray. Amen. Can anyone, everybody hear me clearly? There's like a whistling sound, but you can be heard. There's nothing I can do yeah. Whistle. Said I sound like a groundhog whistling. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for the affirmation of faith, the ecumenical version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And I can need to pause for just a moment. <laughs> See, Satan shows up everywhere we go. <laughs> Is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers and sisters or mother or father or children or friend fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life, Mark 10, 29 through 30. Kroger's, Walgreens, CVS stores issue rewards cards that provide immediate discounts on purchases. And there are reward cards in our mail every day. Travel discounts, airline miles, cash rebates, gas discounts, and on and on. Some rewards are immediate and others accumulate over time. Jesus said a lot about rewards. Again, some immediate and some long-term. In fact, 
In one of our last Sunday school lessons, Jesus warned about the pursuit of immediate short-term rewards, such as receiving praise from men. Instead, we should seek, seek the rewards that come from God in eternity in Matthew chapter 6. That is not to say that God does not reward faithfulness in this life. He does. He is a rewarder of all who seek and follow him, both now and in eternity. Hebrews 11.6 We do not follow Christ to be rewarded, but his grace assures us that his blessings will be ours with hope, love, joy, and peace. We can be assured of Jesus' return and all our rewards will be rewarded. Jesus, just as Jesus fulfilled all of God's promises from the beginning until now, we can rest assured that Jesus will do what he promised in John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And now here's our Pastor Robert with our prayer, songs, and sermon. Jesus loves you all. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm hooked around the back. There we go. <laughs> well, audio issues aside, it's a good morning. We're glad you guys are here. Um, can you hear me okay? I do hear it whistling even in the app out here a little bit, or in the, the amp, I should say. Let me, let me adjust a little volume for a second. Let's see if that, that take the edge out of it a little bit? Yeah, okay. I couldn't hear it sitting back there, but I could hear it up here. Um, we do want to go to prayer, and then we're going to sing uh, a couple of songs as well. So if you had your email handy or you uh, you printed that and brought it with you, have that ready, and we'll sing here in a couple of minutes. Um, Heather, do we have? Yeah, go ahead and bring those up. I know we have some that pop in online, and, and we had received a few others um, at home this week. So we'll, uh, we'll have those in just a second. I do know we have a couple of unspoken requests, and uh, obviously uh, can't give any more details than that, but uh, do remember those. I am grateful that God knows our hearts. He tells us he knows our needs before we even call his name. And uh, that's, that's powerful hope for every day. one pop in as you were saying that so. <laughs> all right uh, of course we do have the unspoken that I mentioned there um, we've got a number of folks that we know uh, are dealing with COVID um, actually Kaylee uh, her whole house in Gallup police she's the only one that doesn't have it but her mom and her stepdad and the other kids they're they're dealing with it so do keep all of them in your prayers because of course that isolates Kaylee too so we're not going to be able to see her for a few weeks but that's for everybody's safety but do pray for their recovery they're uh, they're at home nobody's nobody's had to go to the hospital or anything but the, man it is wearing them out so so do pray for them if you would um, also have uh, Jessica Dale's family listed here there was a death there and so we do want to pray for her um, another unspoken here uh, Heather's parents both have some uh, some health things. Her mom, of course, continuing to recover from being in the hospital, and her dad uh, dealing with AFib with his heart, so do pray for him. I know that Sam was also dealing with some stuff. I saw Sam running around out here earlier, I think. Good to, good to see you guys this morning. Sam, we're keeping you in prayer as well. Um, I do have one for uh, Tommy, and of course that's Tommy up and down the road, I believe, uh, that he's having trouble with falls and those things so do pray for him and uh, a gentleman named Brian Golins he has COVID and uh, they uh, he is uh, in the ICU so do pray for him he had been. oh he had been oh, okay oh came home after six days 
I'm sorry. Uh, you'd think as bad as my handwriting is, I would I would be able to read other people's. But <laughs> so anyhow, uh, if you have other requests this morning, we'll lift those together as well. Again, God knows our needs, and uh, we are thankful. Let's pray together. Lord, we come together this morning. We know it is a sort of a rainy, dreary day out here, but Lord, we know that anywhere that you are is the place we need to be. And we thank you that we can come together as your church. Lord, and it demonstrates every week that the church is so much more than just four walls. Lord, it's your people. We thank you for bringing us together and giving us this time, this, this way that we can still do this, uh, even when uh, we weren't sure months ago. We think of the requests that were lifted this morning, Lord, a couple of unspokens. We ask that you'd be in those situations. Lord, you know them from top to bottom. You know everything about them, and you know exactly what the need is there. Lord, we lift those to you now and commend them to you. Lord, we know many people, friends and family, who are dealing with COVID, and not just Heather and I knowing people, but Lord, lots of others. And uh, Lord, we ask that you be with all of them. Uh, be in their houses. Give them rest. Help them to heal. And Lord, if they're fighting it in the hospital, then we ask that you be with the doctors and nurses as they bring their care. And Lord, that you would be with them and heal them powerfully, all of them. Lord, we think of Jessica Dale's family uh, dealing with the death there, and Lord, we know those things are, are never easy, especially when there are kids in the family dealing with it, sometimes maybe even for the first time. Lord, we would ask for your comfort and your peace there, as only you can send it. Lord, that you would just dwell powerfully with them and Lord, with all of the family, everyone who is uh, dealing with this, and comfort them in their sorrow, surround them with, the, with your peace. Lord, let them know you're still there and you're walking right there with them through everything coming and going. Lord, we think of Heather's parents this morning. We know her mom is still recovering. We're thankful that she is recovering. But uh, Lord, we ask you to continue to, to be with her. Lord, be also with her dad, with the AFib and uh, his heart rhythm. And Lord, we ask that you would touch his heart and just uh, continue to put it where it needs to be. Lord, move that rhythm to where it is supposed to be. Lord, that all of that would work well. Lord, we ask your touch on him. Lord, we ask your continued touch on Sam as well. We're thankful to see him this morning. But, Lord, we know he's dealt with something very similar in recent days. I ask that you would be with him as well, Lord. Just fill him with your healing grace. Surround his heart and keep it as it is supposed to be. Lord, we think of Tommy, who uh, is at every service he can be. Lord, we know he's faithful. We know he's your servant. And Lord, we know he's having some struggles with falls and other things. And I ask that you'd be with him. Lord, touch him in those health issues. And uh, Lord, help uh, keep him upright. And Lord, help us balance specifically. Lord, everything that he is struggling with and dealing with, we would ask for your hand of healing there. We pray also for Carolyn, that you would strengthen her, Lord, give her rest, and the Lord, be with them together, surround them with your presence this morning. And Lord, for Brian Goins, we thank you that he is home after an extended run in the ICU there with COVID, but continue to touch and heal him. Lord, with, the, with this virus, we know it attacks the lungs, and Lord, we ask that you would fill those lungs with your breath of life and bring your healing there this morning. Lord, for any other requests that are on our hearts, I know there surely has to be many. Lord, we know that you know them all. The remarkable thing is that not just here in Elkview, not just here in the U.S., but, Lord, everywhere all around the world, that millions are praying to you all at once. And, Lord, you hear and receive each of those prayers with love and with purpose. And, Lord, that you have not lost us in the shuffle of this big world. And we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for coming to us and all that we've been celebrating recently and ask that you be with us in the service this morning. We pray it in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, if you have the, uh, if you have the uh, email with you, either on your phone or a tablet or you printed it or, or you just know the songs, there are a couple of familiar carols. I'd invite you to step out if you want to stand in front of your vehicles. I uh, do need to mask up. I'll pop mine on here in a second. And uh, we will sing a little bit together. This is Epiphany Sunday. This is the day that we commemorate the wise men arriving. And we'll talk a whole lot more about that in the sermon. But as a result, today is still uh, the ninth day of Christmas. So we've got a couple of carols, although these also touch on the wise men. So we will start with We Three Kings. I know there are five verses here, but none of them are that long, so I think we're going to sing them all, since we don't break this song out very often. So let's join together. We 
three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. I'm going to move the key a little bit, because I feel like that's really low. <laughs> Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity high. Prayer and praising voices raising, worshiping God on high. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright. Westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breathes a life of gathering gloom. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in a stone cold tomb. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God in sacrifice, Alleluia, Alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. I love that one because it grabs the meanings of the gifts. They have those symbols in them. And sometimes we forget that even at Christmas, his death and resurrection was foreshadowed, was, was really prophesied, even in those gifts that were brought. That's not going to show up in the sermon, so I thought I'd share it there. <laughs> Let's sing one more together. And uh, we sang parts of it uh, last week or the week before, but we've included this week the verses about the wise men. So we're going to sing it again. Let's join in the first Noel. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in the fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night. That was so deep, Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. They look 
far to seek for a king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went no can hop back in if you want to. I would assume most of you want to. I'm not sure you want to stand outside for all of it. <laughs> this was blowing something up. All right. Do you want to um, just mention a couple quick things as we get into the sermon? I'll just tell you, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 2, which is probably not a surprise when you get there, you'll see we'll be talking about the wise men today. So Matthew chapter 2, and we'll start right at the beginning of, uh, of the chapter, right at verse 1. Uh, a couple of quick things that I just want to mention. First, uh, relaunch team, you did not miss a call. I didn't forget you. Um, we just, as we're looking at these numbers, we're not even sure that it'll be necessary to meet at this point. So uh, we'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. We'll, we'll at least exchange emails or phone calls or something this week, but I'm not sure uh, a meeting will be all the way necessary. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, the other thing is this, that, uh, and this is, this is just an interesting thing that I've seen done, but not very often, and I always kind of wanted to try it. Um, around Epiphany, which is technically January 6th, um, the 12th day of Christmas, there's an old tradition called chalking the door. Have, have any of you ever heard of this? <laughs> One of you. Okay. <laughs> Well, cool. Was that you? Okay, so none of the rest of you. <laughs> well, all right. Um, what this is, is a home blessing for the year. Uh, it's short, takes just a couple of minutes. There's uh, some scripture verses, and then uh, we pray a blessing on your home. And then you take chalk and mark the year and then three letters, CMB, over the door. And the abbreviation of CMB stands for the stands for two things. One is the traditional names of the wise men. Even though we never get them in scripture, somehow tradition has told us that they, they might have been made, named Casper, uh, Baltazar, and Melchior. I wouldn't file those away for the names of anyone's kids just yet, but there you go. Um, but so you mark those kind of in a commemoration of the epiphany and of the wise men coming to the house, but it also has a Latin abbreviation. It stands for Christus Mencionem Benedicat, and that means Christ bless this house. And so every year at Epiphany, this happens a lot in a lot of other countries, Great Britain especially. Um, it happens here some, but I will send an email sort of detailing this, a little article about it. Uh, if you'd like that done, I would love to come bless your house. 
Uh, so anytime this week, I mean, Wednesday is kind of the big day because it's Epiphany. But if you'd like that done, uh, even if you are afraid you live way out in the boonies and I wouldn't want to drive out there, I would love to drive out there. So I'll send the info around, and if that's something you'd be interested in, please get a hold of me. Uh, we'd love to come and, and pray a blessing over your home for the year. I think that's a perfectly appropriate thing to do. And goodness, after the year we've just come through, we could all use all the blessing we could get. So... <laughs> All right, into Matthew now, and, and Merry Christmas. Again, this is the ninth day of Christmas. It is Epiphany Sunday, and I'm about to ruin everyone's manger scenes. Because today is the day we celebrate when the wise men, the Magi, arrived to visit the child Jesus. Now, why do we celebrate this in January and not on December 25th? Anybody know? Some of you are kind of nodding, Abby. It's because the wise men were not there the night that Jesus was born. The wise men came a little later. The wise men never, ever saw the child in a manger. So I'm sorry about your nativity scenes, but I, actually, the, I might have told this story last year. I knew a guy at, where we lived in Gallipolis years ago. They had a manger scene in their house, and he would have the wise men somewhere else in the house. And every day until January 6th, he moved them a little closer <laughs> to the rest of the scene, and I always thought that was funny. Anyway, messing up the manger scene is not the point of this message. The fact is, the wise men, even in their short appearance in the scripture, just 12 verses, this is all we get of them. They have a lot to teach us. And so, in fact, what we're going to learn from them is, is not a lesson just for finishing out the end of the 12 days of Christmas, but it's something to take with us every day, every year. So we're going to take a look. Matthew chapter 2, and we'll begin at verse 1. And this is right after the account of Jesus' birth is the very next thing that comes in Matthew. And the scripture says this. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east, also magi, probably in a lot of your Bibles, it's the same thing. Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose. Often we saw his star in the east. It can be translated in either way saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Let's pray. Lord, as we examine this, uh, this one moment in the scripture where we hear this story about these visitors, we ask that you would open our eyes to its meanings, not just as Christmas goes, but, Lord, to us each day. And show us these lessons of the wise men. Walk with us from here for the rest of our days. We ask this all in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, the wise men. Every year on this Sunday, we talk especially about these guys. How many of them were there? And so, yeah, exactly. I've got a few that are saying three, and I've got a few that are kind of giving me this. This is actually the right answer. We don't know how many there were, although we've gravitated toward thinking there were three because there were three gifts. So it makes perfect sense. But we actually don't know. There could have been five. There could have been eight or ten. It doesn't really matter because they came. That's the important part is that from a long way off, these guys came. And we can go a lot of different ways with this. And the one really truly important note is that the magi were not jewish they were probably from persia which is modern day iran uh, or parthia which is a specific area in what is now modern day northeast iran so a long way off this would have been 
this would have been a difficult journey. Jesus had been born in Bethlehem. And the shepherds were told, and they told people who it says wondered at all that the shepherds had told them. Notice what it doesn't say. It does not say, as soon as the people heard what the shepherds said, they went to see the baby Jesus too. It doesn't say that. Yet we have the Magi from many, many miles away who have traveled far to seek out the Christ child. And as a reminder kind of of John 1, you know, it says, He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. He was born right there in Bethlehem. But Herod, who is a mere 10 or 12 miles away in Jerusalem, was totally unaware. I mean, the, the word had probably filtered through. But nobody was, was beating down the door to go see Jesus. But here come the Magi. They play right into the next part of that verse from John that says, But to all who did receive him, those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, I know I said this last year because I looked at last year's sermon to make sure I wasn't writing the same one over again. I know I said this last year, but it bears repeating. The Magi being not Jews but Gentiles is important. It's an important reminder for us. Christ is for everyone who will receive him. That's everyone. That's fishermen and Magi and police and people who work for the state and pastors and garbage men and everybody. It doesn't matter. Their specific actions in this passage tell us that, but they also give us another lesson or two to think about. I, I, um, I saw a bumper sticker a few years ago. You've, prob you've probably seen this. It had what looked like the manger scene, had a little star up in the sky on this manger scene, and the caption said, Wise men still seek him. Have you seen this? Yeah? Hats and t-shirts and bumper stickers. It's, I, I love the idea behind it. But the more I thought about it, the more I had to ask another question. I'm not going... Yeah, but is that it? Wise men sought him, sure, that's important, but, but what else? And the name of this sermon is actually the wise men still seek him, but what now? What do we do after that? It's not just in the seeking, is it? We've got to take a sidestep just for a second and talk about what magi were. Because these were men who were part astrologers and part astronomers. They would have looked at the stars constantly. They would have thought that at least in, in, up until this point, would have thought that what happened in the stars had some direct governance over what happens with us. You'll still find that with horoscopes and things like that. But they were not, that was not their whole focus. They were also astronomers. They would have been very, very wise. I mean, hence our name for them. But they would have been very wise in things like the movements of the stars and planets and comets and things like that. Very well studied, exceptionally intelligent people because their, their study would not have stopped with the stars. They would have understood at least what you could understand at that point of the sciences. They would have had a familiarity with a wide group of religious texts. So that the fact that this star appears and they recognize it, I mean, it's unmistakable to them. And it's unmistakable enough that they would have journeyed all the way across the desert for many days with on, on camelback or on foot. Combination of both, probably to come and see this baby. Now, you know, if a baby's born 500 miles away and it's your your child or your, well, it wouldn't be your child. No, you wouldn't be 500 miles away. Uh, if you're, it's your grandchild or even a great-grandchild or a niece or nephew or something. You, you want to make that trip. You know, that's a close relative of yours. They saw a star in the sky about a baby they had never seen and threw all their stuff on the backs of camels to go across the desert. Folks, there's not a truck stop every 20 miles in the desert. I mean, these, these guys are making a long, difficult, lonely journey because they knew who the star was pointing to. They were seeking him. They're seeking the Messiah, and nothing was going to dissuade them from that. And so that's the first part of that lesson for us is they sought, like with great purpose, sought out the Christ. So they come to Jerusalem, and that's understandable. That's the capital of the country at then and now. And you would have gone there to look for a ruler. And they saw the star pointing in that direction, so that's where they went. And they asked the current king, Herod, Herod the Great, where the new king was born. And notice specifically what they say here. We've seen his star, and what? And we've come to worship him. So most definitely the Magi knew who it was they were seeking, and what to do when they met him. 
Now, Herod's very troubled at this. He's, he's got the throne of Israel right now. So any mention of some other king showing up, especially one that he doesn't know about, is probably going to give him a lot of trouble anyway. But Herod had multiple reasons to be troubled about this. He was, he was not Jewish. Did you know that? Herod had the throne of Israel, but he was not a Jewish king. He was Idumean. In, in other words, he's an Edomite. He's descended not from Jacob, but from Esau. So he had no real blood claim to the throne anyway. He had kind of been set up there as a puppet king by the Roman Empire, and that's a whole other sermon for a whole other Sunday. But he asks the Magi to tell him where the child is when they find him all the while planning to have him killed to protect this tenuous grip he has on whatever power he thinks he's got. That context is important for all of this. That's why I lay all that out, because the Magi hear the prophecy then. You know, they say, well, where is he, where is he to be born? And so Herod, you know, consults with the chief priests and scribes, and they tell him, in Bethlehem, and that's, that quote is from Matthew, or from Micah chapter 5. It's actually Micah chapter 5, verse 8, if you ever want to go look that up. It is that specific thing right there. And so then they hear this, and they set off for Bethlehem, man. They were not, like, they didn't linger in Jerusalem very long. As soon as they heard that's where the Christ child was, that's where they're going. And when they leave to go to Bethlehem, this is really interesting. It's interesting to note that they again saw the star and followed it. But Bethlehem is almost directly due south. Of Jerusalem. Stars don't move from north to south. Stars move from east to west. Sun rises in the east, that's the direction because of the rotation of the earth, that's the direction stars move. Stars don't just go north to south. It's just not something that randomly happens, and yet this star is leading them. People can talk to me all they want about conjunctions of planets and comets and whatever might have happened in 4 or 5 BC, because this is when this probably is. Listen, God was directing them to where this child was. 100%. Stars don't do the things that this one was doing. They knew who they were seeking, and they knew who was leading them. And then they find now that's the next part of this because you can't just stop at the seeking yes they sought him they found him and so when they found him they they were not groping in the dark just hoping they would find him they were being led jeremiah 29 verse 13 says that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart the seeking is not a hopeless search they're not just groping around hoping they find where he might be they knew where they were going because they were searching from something deep within, and God was leading them. When you, when you seek God with your whole heart, you will find him, because he'll lead you to himself, just as he did for the Magi. So wise men seek him and find him, and thirdly, they worship him. When the Magi arrived at the house, they worshipped him. They knew who they were looking for. They knew this was the Messiah. They worshiped when they met him. When we meet the Messiah, we do the same thing. What's amazing is that for them and for us, I mean, the Messiah, that's a Jewish concept. The, the whole reason that we know who Jesus is, the whole reason we can know he's the Messiah is because of the history of the Jewish people for thousands of years before that. The prophecies given that he was going to come to them first, but it didn't stop with them. And so even at this early stage, Gentiles are worshiping and recognizing because folks, we are the Gentiles. We're just as welcome, and as we see here, just as welcome from the very start to come and to worship. We do that same thing. Now, the Magi, we, we sang about this, noted for their gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, which is, again, why we think they're probably three. The Holy Family, this was really kind of a, a provision for them, whether the wise men knew it or not, and they probably didn't. But they brought those gifts, and they were very expensive gifts. Like, these were gifts that would have been brought to royalty. Like, they did this on purpose. These were worth more than probably Joseph and Mary had ever had. If you put it all together for their entire lives, they're given these gifts. Well, the Holy Family likely used these to finance their trip, the flight to Egypt, it's called, where they went and stayed for a couple of years to avoid Herod's plan to kill all the children. And that's just a few verses from where we're reading today. So providence is in place here. God not only led, led the wise men, but provided right then 
to make sure that his promise would be protected. We've heard that all through Abraham and Genesis and all that, and we see it coming to its fruition right here. The last thing we hear of the Magi, and this is true, this is, the, this is all we get in the entire Bible of the Magi, these 12 verses right here. And it says simply that they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they departed by another way. They heard this voice from God in a dream, listen, and they obeyed it and believed it. That's the last lesson here. Wise men seek him, yes. They find him, they worship him, and they obey and believe. You have to have all of those together. The Magi could have heard this dream and then decided to ignore it. They could have decided, man, that was no more lamb tacos before we go to bed. That didn't, you know, that was, they could have done, they could have said something like that. But no, they recognized this voice and said, we need to go back a different way. We need to obey this. We need to believe this. I mentioned this on that New Year's video, if you saw it, the one I, I put online at like 11.45 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Uh, German pastor Diedrich Bonhoeffer. You guys have heard me quote him before. I quoted him just a few weeks ago in a sermon. I'm, I'm reading one of his books right now. And it was a book from 1937. It's called The Cost of Discipleship. And he says this, Only he who believes is obedient. And only he who is obedient believes. Those two things go hand in hand. The Magi had heard the instruction and they believed it and obeyed it. If they had believed it but not obeyed it, then disaster would have struck. They would have, well, that was, might have been God talking, but we're still going back the way we want to go. Well, that would have been horrid. That would have been disastrous. If they would have obeyed it but not believed it, then I really have no doubt that all their lessons would have been lost that we wouldn't really have anything to talk about this morning. No. They heard the voice, and they obeyed it and believed it. My friends, when God speaks to us, when we've sought and found and worshipped, and if we try to obey what the Scriptures tell us without really believing what they tell us, then our hearts are wrong from the start. I mean, you can't look at the Scripture and say, it says that, I don't believe that particular part. I'm going to go do something else. It doesn't work that way. You can't just say, well, that's the word of God, but I'm not going to listen to it. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. If we try to obey what the scripture says without really believing it, then our hearts are a mess. And if we say we believe, but then we don't obey, then our belief doesn't really add up to much. It's a little more than perhaps head knowledge, but it never works its way into our hearts and our souls. It never does what it's intended to do. But when we believe and obey, Obey and believe. When we are living out this faith, living out the Messiah's call, truly following the star to where God is leading us, that's when we become the people that God calls us to be. But wise men still seek, sure, and they find. They worship. And they obey and they believe. But those are the lessons from the Magi played out on the stage of the most glorious child in history and in our Bibles over just these 12 short verses. So what now? We've read it, we've seen it, but what do we do with that? And you might be saying, I don't even know where to start seeking. You know, I, I, I don't have some sort of knowledge of everyone's spiritual condition. I mean, I, I'm not standing up here getting some vibe that says, boy, somebody really just needs to be saved. I have no idea from here right now. But I know this, that if, you, if you're saying, I don't, I don't know where to start seeking, but I know I need to, it's as simple as calling out to God and telling Him you need Him. And that might not be for anybody on this parking lot. Maybe it's for somebody watching us on the cameras. It's as simple as just speaking His name. Because He loves you. He's right there with you. Simple as calling out and saying, Lord, I need you. I need you to lead me to you. He will do that, as we've seen this morning. Maybe you're saying, I know Christ. I'm in a great place with Christ. But what do I do now? The answer at the end of that is this, that wise men do still seek him even after they've found him. Seek his will, his presence, seek his strength, his understanding, his guidance, his direction, his spirit. Notice that all of these things I'm saying are his. They're not yours and they're not mine. We don't seek, you know, our best direction. We seek God's direction. You can't come and seek my spirit. I don't have that much to give you in comparison to what God can give you. Seek his spirit, seek his strength, his direction, because he is the object of our daily pursuit even after we've found him. 
A.W. Tozer writes, in, in, by the way, he's another author. A.W. Tozer, I would absolutely commend him to your reading. He's so good. The man had an eighth grade education, but you'd never know that if you read his stuff. I mean, just an incredible mind. But he wrote in his book, The Pursuit of God, this little quote. He says, to have found God and still seek him is the soul's paradox of love. To have found God and still seek him. It's the soul's paradox of love. And it really is. It is. It's his love that made Christmas possible. It's his love that led the wise men. And it's his love that leads us. It's also that love that enables us to seek and to find and to seek again. To worship, to obey, and to believe. Wise men still seek him? <laughs> you better believe it. Seek and you will find. What is that in Matthew? You know? Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door is open. It's Matthew 7, 7 and 8. So seek him still. And be wise. Amen. We're going to move into communion here. And uh, I, I don't... I don't recognize everyone's cars, so if you are a guest with us, good morning, we're glad you're here. You don't have to be a member of the church or even a Methodist to receive communion from us. So we're glad you're here and you're welcome to participate. Um, we're gonna, if you were here last time, we're going to do it the same way. If you weren't here, uh, I will consecrate it up front. It's the pre-filled cups with the wafers sealed into the top. And so after I have, have prayed and, and we've consecrated it, uh, we will bring it around as we did. Heather and I will put gloves and masks on. We'll come to the driver's side, to the driver's window of each car. Uh, just tell us how many you need. We'll hand them to the driver, and then you can hand them around in your vehicle. Uh, you can also receive them as soon as you get them if you want, or you can wait for me to come back up front, and we'll, we can commune together. And that's whatever, whatever you would prefer. There are two layers of that seal at the top. The clear layer first that just has the little print on it. Uh, we'll we'll open up the wafer and then pull that next layer after that to to get the juice. Uh, be careful to just pull the clear layer first, otherwise you'll get the wafer off still sealed up between both layers, and that's really hard to take apart. So um, just a, a heads up about that. Do not uh, and if you need help, uh, don't hesitate to honk your horns or something. I'm going to ask you in just a minute when we go to to uh, take this around to turn your flashers on. Uh, you don't have to do it yet because we haven't prayed. When we start to bring them around, turn your, your flashers on, and then as we get to your cars, turn them off. That way we'll be able to look and make sure when everybody gets it, and then if you have an issue or a problem, turn them on again, and we'll be able to see you and, um, and be able to, to help you. So I'm going to move the uh, mic stand over here so that we can get set and commune together. Can you all hear me? Is that picking up all right? Okay. Good. Good. I will mask up and glove up when I start with the baskets. I'm not going to be bringing this loaf or this uh, cup of juice around, so I'm going to not worry about masking up right now because I'm the only one that's going to be touching it. But the others are all pre-sealed and we'll glove up and stuff before we touch them. So just wanted to make sure everybody was aware we're trying to be as careful as we possibly can here. When we go through the great Thanksgiving prayer, this is essentially the same one we use every time. Of course, it has some words that change for the season. I know by this point, you guys are probably familiar with that. Um, if you know the responses, feel free to say them. I will say them into the microphone up here as well, because I can't hear you anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, feel free to say them along, and let's, uh, let's prepare our hearts for communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness. You brought forth life on the earth and formed us in your image, and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide the wise men to where the, where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places into his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, as often as you do, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you would, go ahead and turn your flashers on. And uh, when we get to you, turn them off. And then when we come back up, 
if uh, you're having problems with any of it or whatever, I'll ask you to turn them on again and, and we'll uh, assist you from there. All right, if you need, uh, if you're having any trouble or you need any help, hit your flashers real quick and we'll come and help you out there. All right, again. All right. the body of Christ broken for you. Let us commune together. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us commune together. Amen. Lord, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of communion. We ask that you would walk with us, strengthen us, Lord, fill us with your spirit. Go with us each and every day and help us, Lord, not to just stop at the first seeking, but to find, to worship, to obey and believe, and Lord, then to seek you all of our days continually. As we ask in Christ's name, amen. We're going to close in, uh, in just a second. Let me walk back around here. Communion it was a bit of a longer service. I thank you guys all for coming out. It's also a bit of a longer sermon. Uh, normally they come in about four pages. This one was about six, but I got excited and I just kind of couldn't stop writing. So uh, thank you all for coming out. Um, again, uh, watch your emails this afternoon. I'm gonna, when I send the video around, I'll also forward an email around uh, about the uh, chalking of the door. If that's something that you would like, that home blessing, uh, we'd love to come do that. That's an easy one. Uh, if you don't have chalk, we can bring it. Um, and it doesn't matter what color, by the way. So if you're watching this, if you'd like us, to, you don't have to be on the lot. If, even if you're not a member of the church, if you're here and you would like us to come and pray, pray a blessing on your house, let us know. We, this is done outside, by the way. So we don't need to come in. The uh, social distancing was, is fine. It's easy to do on a porch or in a front yard or whatever. And it doesn't matter what color the chalk is. So if you have kids and they want to use bright colored sidewalk chalk, that's awesome. You know, scream that blessing to your whole neighborhood if you want to with 
orange and pink and blue and whatever else. So but we'll have some chalk to bring, just some basic white stuff, but uh, it doesn't, if you have sidewalk chalks or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is not what it's made of, it's what it represents and what we pray during it. So anyway, if that's something you'd like to do, then uh, we can do that. Uh, please watch your emails again. The uh, addresses for the offerings, I'll make sure to send them around once more, just because that's a, a necessary thing still. Both churches still have expenses, and an offering is an act of worship anyway. We want to make sure we've got that available for you. So we'll send those addresses around also. I believe that that is everything I have. Um, yeah, relaunch team, watch for a message from me too. We'll uh, figure out if we even need to meet or not. So, uh, with that said, let's close with a benediction. Now may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. Uh, when we dismiss, uh, let's let the uh, second and third rows go, and then the front row. Thank you all so much. Go in peace. God bless. <laughs>